Hi, this is Tam Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire, and what I'm picking is called spice bush. This is spice bush berries. The berries, when you squish them, bring out a sort of a cross between lemon and allspice. And you can chop up these berries and put them in the freezer and then use them as a substitute when you're cooking instead of using allspice. The leaves and the stems can be used in making tea. You can chop the little stems up into little pieces. You can add them along with berries and with leaves into your tea. So I'm gathering this because on this nice fall day it'll be nice to have a warm cup of tea and I want to get all these berries before we lose them all to frost. Alright, what I'm doing is taking a branch of it home and what I'm going to do is show you how to positively ID this plant so you too can enjoy some of this spice bush. Well, here we are at home and I brought home that branch that I cut off of the spice bush and I want to talk to you a little bit about the medicinal benefits of a spice bush and I'd actually like to do a little series with you all. Um, just testing out various teas during the weeks to come and sharing with you the medicinal benefits of the plants. There's a lot of regurgitated information online when I was began to search out, for example, how would you use a tree, tree bark to make flour? Well, there's a lot of sites that'll say, you would name different trees that you can use to utilize the bark to make flour, but no pictures of anyone doing it, no examples no recipes to follow and as I began to study out various medicinal plants I realized that as you probably noticed that a lot of sites are simply repeating information that you'll find on another website so or even from books and as I said there's just a lot of regurgitated information and instead of giving you that what I'd like to do is share with you from our experience and from the testing we're doing with the various plants and so this week is going to be devoted to different types of tea so down here I've brought the branch home you can see I've begun to separate and I'm going to take all the leaves off I have begun my leaf pile and then I also have the bigger part which I'll remove some of the bark from and so one of the things I need to do is to take these berries and I'm going to partially dry them, then I'm going to chop them up and freeze them. And if you can see here, if you can zoom in, you'll see that inside every berry is this black colored pit. That pit is actually not a flavor you would want in your teas. A lot of sites say that you can. However, this has a peppery flavor, whereas this part of the berry has the allspice lemony type flavor. So what I'm going to do is remove the pits. I'll dry the pits out and grind them up to use in various soups and stews, whereas this portion will keep for teas and, and spices. If you are looking for this plant in spring, you would identify it by the alternate leaves, the elliptical shape. But in spring, before the leaves come out, this whole tree bursts forth in clusters of yellow, very pretty smelling flowers. And a lot of people mistake them for the leaves, but really they're the flowers that the tree begins that way. This plant so called the spice bush is also known as wild allspice or a fever bush or snapwood. The branches are very easy to snap when you're pulling them off the tree. The American spice bush plant has, has a long term, a long history for being used medicinally as well as just using the spices of it for flavor in the kitchen. This tree, this spice bush, has also been known by other names, spice wood or allspice or fever bush. The, when you make the tea, especially when you make it from the bark and you use a lot of the bark in your tea, it brings a fever on, sort of like using uh, ginger to induce a fever when you're sick so that you'll sweat out your, your cough or cold. And it's also been known to destroy intestinal parasites. What I'm doing is removing some of the bark here. The 
early settlers would remove the bark and dry it and actually use this bark in place of cinnamon in recipes. And I'll also cut up a few little twigs and we'll put that into my boiling water. The knife I'm using here is called a badger pup. It's from Topps Knives. Really handy knife for doing little work like this. I wish I could tell you how they smelled, or at least let you smell these berries. Um, during the American Revolution, when coffee ran out, they would use this tea as a substitute for coffee, and you would use the berry, the leaves, the twigs, and also the bark. You can grind it up and make it into your tea, and if you, especially this time of year with flus and everything going around, this is a very healthy tea to drink to keep those colds away, the vitamins, the vitamin C that's in it, just a very healthy but also delicious tea. So what I'm going to do is gather up some of my berries, some of my leaves and some of the bark. If you're making an individual cup you could just pick up one of these and scoop a little bit of the berries in along with some leaves and twigs and pop it into your boiling water. Leave it in for about 10 minutes and enjoy a cup of tea if you want to add your sweetener, you can. But in this case, I'm going to be filling up my billy can with some spice bush tea. So I'll be bringing some of the berries and some of the leaves and twigs over to the fire and show you how to make a good spicy cup of tea. Okay, my water has come to a boil here, so I'm going to take it off the fire move it down over to the Okay, I'll be putting in my leaves. Always check your leaves. Make sure there's no little creatures that made a home on the other underside of them. And I'll be adding the twigs, the bark, and the berries as well. And we'll just let that steep. The smell's already coming out. We'll just let that steep about 10 minutes. Now, the leaves you can only use during summer and fall, whereas the twigs and the bark of the tree you can use year round and as I mentioned before the berries I'm going to chop up and freeze because they're very fatty berries they will go rancid if you try to keep them on your counter so during the winter you can just go out and pick yourself some twigs or scrape off some of the bark and make yourself a cup of tea but remember this is an awesome tea for reducing fever great in vitamins and overall a healthy tea very aromatic tea. Well it's been sitting for about five minutes so I'm taking my knife and just stirring it around. You can see the berries are changing color. They actually remind me a lot of rose hips. They're not. And when the tea is all set I'll strain it out and we'll test out a cup of spice bush tea. As you can see it has a sort of a orange pinkish tinge to it and and if you look in the bottom of the can, you can still see the leaves, berries, twigs, and the little bits of bark that I cut off. For this canteen, this is just a coffee can, all I used was the small handful you saw in the video. So just experiment with it. Do it to the taste that you love. All right, now it's time to taste the tea. Oh, it's really nice. It sort of has a flavor that the sweetness of pine needle tea has, but without the bitterness and then the added flavoring of the spice bush, the allspice flavor. This is Tam Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire, thanking you for joining me, for coming over for a cup of tea, and stay tuned. We'll try to share with you some more videos this coming week with different wild edible medicinal teas.